Good day, everybody. It is Primal Chaos here, and welcome to the channel. Ever since I did Lara Fabian Adagio Live of the World Music Awards, uh, you guys told me in no uncertain terms that I had not heard good Lara Fabian. <laughs> so I figured I'd, I'd correct that today. And look, almost universally, the song that was requested out of those comments the most was uh, Je suis malade, which is, uh, it's, it's a strange one. It, it translates directly to I'm sick. Um, now, I've looked at the lyrics a little bit to sort of get an understanding of what, what that means, whether it means like I'm sick with love or, you know, maybe it's a song about like having a terminal terminal illness. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I, I did press translate just now. I don't want to get too bogged down in, in the English translation because I really just want to absorb it in its natural French uh, and get a real feel for the flavor of how of Lara's interpretation of of. The, the music more than anything there's always time to get back in subsequent listens and really get an understanding for the song but it seems to be that it is a song about you know uh just being wholeheartedly in love with somebody you know i'm dirty without you i'm ugly without you uh, which is i mean i'm sure in french it's much more beautifully lyrical than that the english translation seems a little bit ham-fisted to be honest um but that's okay because I'm here for the voice and uh, let's let's check it out. I uh, don't want to talk too much because again, I'm not sure exactly what to expect with this one. I, I'm, I don't believe I'm familiar with the song at all, but universally this seems to be the one that touches people's souls. So um, I promised myself I wouldn't cry on camera again, <laughs> but I suspect it's going to be tough. All right, here we go, guys. I don't believe that uh, a language will limit an emotion. Uh, so there's not a specific language to say something that comes from the heart. You can say something from the heart in Japanese, Indian, Italian, English, it doesn't matter, as long as it's sincere. I truly believe specific feelings, true feelings, have no limitations or no barriers when it comes to honesty. Tu m'as privé de tous mes chants, tu m'as vidé 
que j'avais du talent Avant ta peau Cet amour m'a tué Si ça continue Je crèverai seul avec moi Près de ma radio Comme un gosse idiot En écoutant ma propre voix Qui chantera Je suis malade, complètement malade, comme quand ma mère sortait le soir et qu'elle me laissait seule avec mon désespoir. Je suis Who says you need language? <laughs> wow. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> and we're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just had to compose myself a little bit. Um, look, you know, it's it's funny. I'm, I'm not an overly emotional guy um, in, in just about every other respect. But what always seems to get me is um, witnessing greatness. Witnessing somebody performing... Uh, far above and beyond the expectations you know and that's exactly what this is I, I never do this typically when I when I react to a song um I actually tend to annoy a lot of people by stopping and going back over things and analyzing it and stuff like that um I just don't know that it's you know I I couldn't I couldn't find it within myself to press pause because I, I felt like it would just derail the uh the flow of the song too much um, and I really wanted to get a sense of how it builds, you know, um, normally look, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Um, being aware of music to the degree that I am, I can, I'm quite comfortable in being able to stop and rewind a few seconds and go back in and, and dive back into the flavor of what the process of building the song to its, its crescendo is, you know, but in this case, I just wasn't willing to risk it. Um, so yeah, I think I will, I'll, I'll go back now and check out a few things that it, were going through my head. Um, cause I'm always like trying to think about, oh, what's something interesting to discuss or talk about? Um, and you know, like I, I was trying to catalog them in my mind cause I knew I wasn't going to stop, you know? So, but the thing is like, I mean, you guys are all bigger fans of me, of Lara than, than, than I am at this point. Um, so there's probably not much here I can tell you that you don't already know, but here's, here's some stuff that, that I called out as, as just being interesting. And I, I loved, um, I mean, again, I mentioned this in the last one. She has this way of making her breaths somehow musical. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. Um, it's not, it seems as though she doesn't need to breathe. She just adds breaths in for affectation you know you can hear how it's sort of like she it, she catches as she's breathing in and like in an emotional way the same way someone would when they're crying right and and just just her ability to be so delicate 
Um, and, you know, I mean, it, it's almost at this point, this song seemed to me like I was feeling like it was almost musical theater to the, to the point where it's like, you can imagine it's in like the third act towards the, the beginning of the third act of, of, of like a, a piece where, um, you've got the female lead who's alone and finds herself in a, in a, in a, in a turning point of her story where she has, um, to, to make a hard choice. Right. And it's an emotional choice and, and either way there's going to be incredible loss. Right. And that's, that's the vibe I got when I was watching this. I felt like I could picture her on stage, you know, um, you know, just against a, a black backdrop with a spotlight and just her expressing her vulnerability. Right. That's what this sounds like to me. I also love the fact that um, parts of this is, is just... Um, it's just so conversational, like it flows. So I mean, like it's just so effortlessly conversational. Um, but what's what's interesting though to me is I get the vibe that this isn't a conversation. This is her having the conversation with herself in her mind. You know, that's that's the that's the way I interpret it based on her performance of it. Um, but again, it's just like she truly wears her emotions on her face and through her physicality, which is like that's half the battle right? Like as far as being a singer who connects with people the way that she does, you can have the world's greatest voice, but if you're not connecting to the audience in the way that she does, it's just not the same, you know? Um, I'm just trying to think what else there was that was... There's that breath again, right? See, it's a choice. The breath, the breath. I mean, we all know like opera singers and stuff like that. They work out their breathing to suit the melody and to, to make sure that they have the utmost amount of control throughout the process. But in this case, it seems more lyrically chosen, you know, like if, if she's like breathing. Breath. Another breath. No. Yeah, it sounds. She's definitely choosing places where, like, she could easily have fit breaths into other points there, but it would have probably distracted from the flow of that line you know, as a beautiful legato sort of melody. Uh, and so, you know, it's sort of, that's what I mean. She's choosing where to breathe. It, it almost feels like she doesn't need to because she's taking in these incredibly shallow breaths that just sound beautiful rather than functionally provide her with the air she needs to resonate. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's just, she's just insane. She's an absolute master. Oh. I mean, listen to that intonation with such a shallow sound, right? She's she's using like um, a fifth of, of, or probably even less of, of her potential voice. And yet she still manages to articulate those beautiful intervals uh, effortlessly, you know, it's... <laughs> Don't fool. 
comme un, un rocher, comme un péché. Je suis accroché à toi, je, je suis fatigué, je suis épuisé, me faire semblant d'être heureuse. Quand ils sont là, je bois toutes les nuits et tous les whisky pour moi. Man, there's just something perfect about just this as a composition. Like it's like lyrically, like how often do you hear love interpreted in a way that it's harmful to you, right? Like it's, you know, I drink whiskey every night. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I pretend to be happy. I mean, it's just like, I'm completely sick. You know, I pour my blood into your body. It's like, I'm, and I'm like a dead bird. It's like, I'm giving you everything in, in me to the point where I'm physically taxed by it. Um, and I don't know whether it's, you know, it's because it's, the love isn't reciprocated or even if it is, you know, it's like, you can be completely um, like encapsulated by someone else's soul, right? And that, that could be what this is about. There doesn't seem to be very specific about whether or not, you know, maybe it's a crush that's unrequited or something like that. Um, or whether they are both in love with each other and it's just, it's just so overwhelming to her physically, right? And emotionally. Um, but then to, to choose to compose the song in French, which is, I mean, everybody agrees, is the language of love and, and is able to express the nuance of, of emotional sort of complexity like this, you know? Um, is this, is it, I'm not sure, is this from something or was it composed for Lara or like by Lara? I, I don't know. So let me know in the comments. Um, but it's just like, it's, it's one of those things where it just fires on all cylinders. Everything is, is just spot on performance, flawless. Um, the way the song builds is flawless. And in fact, it's interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't end. while the song does does build to a crescendo it doesn't end up in this this wild out of control belt that a lot of these songs do it's still kind of restrained um which is is again it's kind of nice like it, it's more that it doesn't get more flashy and loud it just gets more aggressive <laughs> you know Like the fact that they chose to end it on a down note rather than doing like the crowd favorite, which is always to belt a really high note at the end and hold it, you know, she's taken the melody up and then dropped it down for the final note, you know, which is just a really mature choice, you know, I mean, when was this? This was released in 94. I'm not sure when this video was made. Um, Oh, and this part too. I forgot about the acapella moment. Si ça continue, je creverai ça avec moi. À demain, radio. Comme un gosse idiot. En écoutant ma propre voix. Oh, okay, hang on. And when you leave, I'm sick. Completely sick. It's like she can't physically stand to be without whoever the person is. Um... Yeah, I think we might be somewhere around that moment now. Maybe not. Bold choice. What a great moment. And and the beauty of, of having her by herself is, again, it expresses her 100% vulnerability uh, and not being constrained by the traditional rhythm or beat and allowing her to just express her, herself freely. Like, she's still obviously singing in time um, with herself, but it, it sort of gives you that, like, you know, without a net kind of risk factor that, that the audience senses, right? Um, she's there by herself expressing herself 
to the deepest level alone. And that's just magical. It's really, it really is. And also, it, it contrasts beautifully with the with the crescendo that follows, right? Oh, I love that guitar work. For a second there, it almost sounds like a James Bond theme when... Very cool. What a great band. Top shelf. What a powerful moment. Wow. So normally this is where I'd go to an ad break and then come back after with like a more of a, a summary of everything. But I think I've said all I need to say on this one. Um, thank you. That's all I can really say on that one. Thank you for the uh, recommendation. Um, yeah, if, if you feel like I've brightened your day at all, um, I'd appreciate a coffee. Uh, it's a great way of supporting the channel. I'll leave a link in the description. And... Uh, yeah, just like, share, subscribe. I'll, I'll definitely be doing much more of this and, and definitely digging deeper into Dimash's career as well, because like, you know, there's, if there's still moments like this out there that are to be discovered, um, I'd like to see them. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'll just jump to my ad break and then I'll be out. So thanks again for sticking around. Appreciate you guys on Primal Chaos and I'll catch you on the next one. Hey guys, this video is made possible by Enchroma. One in six guys and one in 200 women are colorblind. And if that happens to be you, there's something you can do about it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to Enchroma's website where you can get a free eye test. And while you're there, maybe pick up some corrective lenses. They've got styles to suit everybody and a 60 day money back guarantee. So you got really nothing to lose. And while you're there, use the code chaos in checkout to get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you.